Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in to the Financial Investor Channel. My name is Brent and today we're going to be covering our December 2017 end of the month portfolio changes. So in this video I'll be talking about the overall month performance for my non-retirement account, my retirement account, we're going to be talking about the dividends that I was paid out in the month of December, any swing trains that I initiated or completed, and the dividends that increased during the month of December. Afterwards I will be going in and talk, uh, taking a look at my complete portfolio, how much uh, my non-retirement account increased over the last five months that I had ran it and then my retirement account how it had changed over the last few months that I had initiated it and then taking a look at my full dividends for 2017 and then take a look at my dividends going into 2018 where they will be and then what the game plan is for the future in 2018 so we, we will be taking a look over at Market Pro which is my Merrill Edge professional tool. So I'll be kind of showcasing a little bit out of there. So let's go ahead and jump into about a, a day ago, I released the article on my Facebook site. So if you do not follow me on Facebook, the link will be in the description below. I'll also leave a comment. You guys can click on the link, follow me on Facebook, follow my page. I also have a group that you know we discuss some stuff in. Not a lot of people are chatty in there, but if you guys are interested in joining and talking, uh, that would be great. And uh, lots of fun. So anyways, <laughs> if you, once you've clicked over on my page, I've already um, wrote up the article over a day ago. So we're going to really quickly cover December because I don't want to make this video too long. Uh, I can hear some rockets and stuff going out outside. It's about 15 minutes to midnight. So happy New Year's to you guys out there that are here watching this right now on the very first of January and happy belated New Year's if you are watching this after the first of January so I hope you guys the best for 2018 so let's go ahead and get into the video so we're gonna be covering the overall month performance end of day on 31 December 2017 so the S&P 500 had a one month change of 1.81% very good the Dow Jones had an increase of 3.25% so just about double the S&P 500 the Nasdaq had an increase of 1.16% for the month of December and then my F&I portfolio trailed right behind the Dow Jones with an increase of 2.99% so my portfolio did get a bit dragged down by my Roth IRA in December now uh, we're going to jump right into the portfolio update so my non-retirement account is sitting right at above uh, 59,409 the balance on the very first of december was 57,604 i withdrew 54 dollars and 22 cents and withdrew that and put that into my roth ira i was paid out 180 dollars and 71 cents from my my dividends in December and then the appreciation you can see here in the month of December my non-retirement account had an increase of 3.23 percent and that was about one thousand six hundred and seventy eight dollars and forty one cents so here is beach okay so how I like to do it on here is this is my complete retirement portfolio this goes into the shares of each stock that I currently hold in my unit cost average so here you'll see that Abby I have 21 shares of Abby I bought them at $71.75 that is my average cost per unit now Abby if you look them up right now they are sitting at let me quickly look them up they're sitting at $96.71 so you can see that was my from my buy-in that I bought the stock I am up 34.78 percent so that is what this lane mean here so since I bought the stock how much am I either up or down and you can see here this is the stock for the one month performance so Abby was very calm in the month of December ADP had a nice increase of 3.41 Colgate had an increase of 4.85 Costco had an increase of 4.85 etc so overall I kind of list out how each stock had changed in the month of December. You can see here that CenturyLink had an increase of 14.75%, whereas last month, if I bring up my changes that I kind of did, you can see they had a decline of 21.09%. My portfolio buying was down 22%. So December is definitely a much nicer number. I'm only down roughly 10.68%. 
I wish I had averaged in a little bit. I did buy a few more shares of Centrelink, which we'll be covering. You can kind of see Edison, I made one buy in share because I bought them inside my Roth IRA, which I'll be covering, and they had dropped by quite a bit. So I bought another share in my Roth or my my CMA account where I had some cash available, but this continued to fall. I thought I had buy it at a good buying opportunity. And I made the mistake there, but it's okay. So you can see the following changes for the remainder of my portfolio. Now going into my Roth IRA here, we can see here for the balance on the very first of December was 1,481. I made uh, contributions of around $4,000. I wanted to max it out for 2017. That way going into 2018, only very first I can initiate another deposit to kind of max it out for the year the interest and dividends that I was paid out for in December is twenty seven dollars and eighty cents the appreciation and depreciation of the account is negative two hundred and twelve dollars and thirty seven cents so you can see here that my Roth IRA currently sits at fifty two sixty one which is below what you can add to your Roth IRA per year so $5,500 is how much you can add. I'm actually down in my portfolio here by 0.45%. So hopefully this all changes here in the future. I can at least balance that out where I'm positive. So CenturyLink has bounced back in both my, my non-retirement account and my retirement account here. We can see here that my buy-in cost in my Roth IRA. Let me just take a quick, uh, take a quick look over here at my retirement account and CenturyLink is priced at 1668 I bought it at 1712 so yeah okay that's correct so I am still down in the position by around 2.57 percent but they did make a nice recovery this month I wish I had been able to average in a bit more in CenturyLink I just didn't want to increase my equity too much because between my my C my non retirement account and my Roth IRA, I'm about break even with what I'd like uh, across all my positions. So IEX Edison International, this is one that had dropped due to the California fires. It had dropped by roughly 14% in December early on. I decided to make it you know a buy-in opportunity. I thought $70.55 would be a great buy. They have continued to fall, falling down now to $63.24. So I do have a little bit more room to add some more equity into this position. So I may add a little bit more into this position in order to average down for the long term. OMC this one right here, I'm kind of uh this is one I didn't plan on holding for the long term, but this one's, you know, I've talked about it in my last video. Uh, it does, it has had increases of seven years of paying dividends. They have free cash flow, some dividend, uh, some revenue, and some net income increasing over the last couple of years. So, not a long-term buy and uh, not really planning on being a long-term buy and hold, but I am buying and holding until I'm able to break even, either through dividends or the uh, capital appreciation comes back up to zero and then AT&T had a very nice increase of 15.22% within my Roth IRA. What I should have done is uh, instead of buying these ones right here in the middle I should have taken this money averaged down on CenturyLink when it was available and I could have probably nullified the loss that I had taken there and then I could have doubled up on my equity within AT&T within my Roth IRA and that would have been a great difference. I did quite a bit of swing trades in December, which we're going to be covering here. So uh, the total for my portfolio is around $64,670. So the total for the month, if you took the CMA increase and you took the Roth IRA decrease, it averaged right around 2.99%, right around that number. So CenturyLink was my biggest winner with a gain of 14.75% for the month, whereas Edison International was my biggest loser with a, with a loss of 22.32%. In my portfolio, I am roughly down around 10% since my buy-in, so that's not too bad. I, I don't consider 10% being bad. I could see Edison jumping back up for sure in the future. So I then withdrew my $52.22 dividends paid for my non-retirement account, and put that into my Roth IRA. Okay, so I already, I kind of, um, sh and I already talked a little bit about doing this. I just did it for the readers that are 
reading this in the future. So dividend payouts in the month of December. So I decided to kind of split it up here. So inside my non-retirement account, inside my Roth IRA, and then the total for the both. So you can see here that Pfizer, Intel, Ford, Costco, Exxon, CenturyLink, Microsoft, Real, uh, Realty Income, and Entertainment Properties have all paid out dividends in the month of December. That was a total amount of $180.71 there inside my Roth IRA. I had decided to buy some more CenturyLink inside there, so they paid an additional $24.30. GCI, which is a telecommunication, it's not telecommunications, it's a uh, technology company. They do a lot of um, third party assisting with companies. We've used them in the past. Uh, they've paid out 32 cents this year. That was This was a swing trade I had initiated. IR, this is another swing trade. So both these together kind of added to the total for the month of $27.77. So between my non retirement account and my Roth IRA, I had a very nice uh, dividend payout of $208.48. So CenturyLink was my biggest payout this month. Between my Roth IRA and my non retirement account, I was able to get $70.20 from them. Together, my November stock earned. Had was uh, $208.48 in dividend payout, which did not break my last uh, last month's record. Now, I did a whole bunch of swing trades this month in December. You know, I don't think this is a great thing kind of going forward. I did it. I don't think it's very beneficial to do it. I definitely prefer to spend a lot more time researching stocks for the long term and buying in. Otherwise, I get stuck or I'm buying a stock and I'm kind of holding it because I'm down in the position and I've kind of I talked about this in another video where you know utilities I don't quite understand them but technology you know that's kind of like my field so kind of I think going forward where was I right here I don't know if I will continue doing swing trades I talked about it a bit but I would rather buy and hold for the long term because I feel that I'm kind of playing uh, you know, playing with fire by trying to swing trade, I would rather just do the research, buy into a stock for the long term, knowing that this stock is going to be increasing their dividend uh, with a very nice uh, steady growth over the next few years. They're recession resistant. I don't have to worry about selling them. All I have to worry about is them paying me a dividend and me reinvesting that dividend back into the stock. So I did buy IEX thinking it had bottomed down after the recent 14% decline after the four Cali fires, but there was still some more room to grow. So I will be increasing my dividend income for the year by $116 from Edison International. I added a few shares to my CenturyLink, which, oh yeah, so here I kind of talk about, I bought two star, uh, bought two shares of CenturyLink inside my non-retirement account, so it's able to drop my cost basis from 1871 to 1867. This, um, price per share difference it saved me around four cents by doing that Edison International I bought one share of that it wasn't able to average me down because uh, I primarily bought it inside my Roth IRA and see these ones right here these are just zero because these are brand new initiated trades that I made in this December and I either haven't um, averaged down on them or uh, you know, they're just fresh. And then these are my swing trades here. I marked them as swing trades. So you, you can see I sw uh, swung trade IR, Cato, SCG, GCI, UGI, and I sold off my New York Community Bank Corp. So I did make this is dividends per share or uh, difference per share. So if you take the share amount, so 13 cents here, and you multiply it by seven, so 13 by seven is a little over 80 cents. So that would be the. Um, the trade that I made so I made around 80 cents off the the buying and selling and then I was also able to capture a dividend so I, I believe this one paid out 60 cents per share per quarter so I was able to make 60 times the 13 which I believe was around seven dollars so that'll get paid out in January sometime so while you know the dividend capturing is kind of fun if you had more capital but I would, you know, I much more enjoy looking up stocks that I really enjoy and like, such as Avi, which are pharmaceuticals, Cisco, um, my my Intel, my Lowe's, my Microsoft, Pepsi, Paychex. These are all great companies that I actually trust. And Edison International, you know, I made kind of a bad call on this one. 
it's in California you know they have some very strict rules in California in general <laughs> so dividend increases for the month of December Pfizer increased their dividend from a dollar 28 per share to a dollar 36 this is the difference of eight cents per share so Pfizer I hold 111 shares so this will increase my dividends let's see here if I go here and open up my calculator and go down here I have 111 shares and I times this by 0.8 difference so that'll get me an eight dollar and eighty eight eight dollars and eighty eight cent increase for the year just for holding the exact same stocks same thing with AT&T I hold quite a bit of AT&T here you can see I hold 95 here and 17 here so 95 plus 17 is 112 and then they had an increase in dividend by four cents so that is multiplied by 0 0.04 so just for holding the stock into the new year they increase it I'm going to be making an additional four dollars and 48 cents from those dividends so that is it for this um, this section and coverage so uh, I do have my portfolio posted up on the financial investor channel I do have a warning you know just because I invested in a stock does not mean that you should do uh, you should be invested in it always do your own research as you know I do post how much I am up in the position so this is a good warning to other investors that I bought it at $71.75 if they're sitting at $97 $96 is it is it really a good buying opportunity probably not that would be for you to do your own research so here we can see that this is my dividend income for the 2018 year so these are the stocks that I'm currently holding either in my non-retirement account or in my retirement account the unit cost per share the shares that I have the dividend that they they pay out per share currently and the yield that I purchased them at so we can see that, that Verizon and AT&T are sitting at a yield of around 5.51 5.37 Centrelink I bought it I'm sitting at a yield of roughly 11.57%. So that's nearly 12% yield. Central link down here in my Roth IRA, I'm sitting at a yield of 12.62. So we can see that the balance or the average yield for this non-retirement account portfolio is 4.08. My annual income for that portfolio is 2022. And my retirement account, the average yield is 6.3. And the total annual amount I'll be paid out is $273.74. So the total is uh, $2,295.88. And then on my, uh, my website as well, I have my dividend income here. And this shows you the dividend income that I received in 2017. So I changed to a dividend investor right around August. I had made the change for my Motif investing when I had some dividend stocks such as IP, NVIDIA, Activision, Blizzard, because I had a lot of growth stocks, Amazon and such. And um, I had Weight Watchers and a few others. And it is midnight now. So Happy New Year's to you guys out there. It just hit 12.01. And then um, going into August, September, October, November, December, I had a very nice steady increase and I made $880.73 in the, in the year of 2017. And this amount right here, you can see here, this is for my all investment accounts. We can see here for 2018 going into the year, I'm currently estimated to receive $229.95. 200, uh, $2,295.24, which sits right here with $2,295.88. So it'll be roughly right around the same. Now, as far as the change in each of my portfolios, this will be very quickly. You can see that my non-retirement account had an increase since I kind of started this um, sort of trading in my dividend growth and uh, dividend growth investment style dividend income investment anyways the overall gain percentage that I had received since starting the style of portfolio in August is roughly 11.3 percent whereas my re my retirement account it is down a little bit here let's switch over to my retirement and my connection, I think I got logged out there. 
Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Okay. So inside of my retirement account, I am currently down in my retirement account by roughly 5.3%. So I am looking to definitely work on my portfolio within my Roth IRA. So I am planning on adding some more money to my Roth IRA. I will be kind of choosing better stocks that I feel will be much better picks. I won't be going for the stocks that are you know utilities more than likely or I probably won't be doing a lot of swing trading you'll probably you'll probably see me focus down you know buckle down and start picking some stocks that are much more attuned to what I normally invest in and the profession that I'm in which is technology so that is basically it for this video I don't have too much else to really cover right now so inside my non-retirement account I'm sitting at twenty two dollars inside my Roth IRA I'm sitting at around thirteen cents I believe it's gonna take a little bit to kind of get that information but um that is it for this video if you guys have enjoyed the video have enjoyed the information that was uh, release go ahead and hit the like button below if there are any questions that you guys have for me go ahead and leave them in the comments below again I post a lot of information out on Facebook and on my website so if it's posted on my on my website I always share it over to my Facebook site so go over there follow the page uh, join the group and talk with me and my other um, friends there so that is it for this video again if you are brand new to my channel go ahead and subscribe for future financial videos thank you for tuning in happy new year's once again and I will see you in 2018 bye bye